Okay, I had one of my students um, request a video on how to do a runs task, and uh, I got I've got the I got this problem and also all the equations I'm going to show you. I got them out of this book. It's called Introduction to Management Science by Hillier. Um, very good book if you're interested in looking at a book in management science. So anyway, what is a runs test? Well, you can see you may not be familiar, but this is called a uh, statistical process control chart so they're measuring a process and it has to be within certain limits so normally if it if it, if it goes too low you adjust the machine if it goes too high you adjust the machine and it's considered out of control if you end up all outside these lines so this is called the upper control limit and the lower control limit so if you just consider the control limits um, the process is within is in control but there's another thing you need to worry about whether it's in control is if it doesn't if it has enough randomness if it doesn't have randomness, that means the that you can still reduce variation. There's still a source of variation. So um, the way to test for randomness, you can run something called runs tests. And run tests are non-parametric tests that uh, they just look to see if if your data is truly random. So there's two types of runs. There's a median that we're going to go over today. There's a medians run test and an up and down. So when you're doing the medians run test. Uh, let me copy it over here. You would take, sometimes it's just as easy to uh, take your data and circle. So I'm circling all the ones that are in the bottom in a row, right? So there's four in the bottom and then five on top above, one on the bottom. So whenever it goes, jumps from top and the bottom, you circle it. So there's four and then there's two here and then it goes down and it goes up then down and there's three up, one down, four, up, four in a row up. And you count those in each one of those runs. Each one of those is called a run. So there's 10 runs in this median test. Okay. Um, now, normally I do it on Excel. And I, I will do something like this. Uh, if you take those. So I, just to save time, I'm going to go ahead and, and put them in here like this. So for the medians test, you can see that I have uh, four Bs, which is these right here. And then right after that, five A's. So I'm just putting them in the order they're at, five A's, and then one down below, one above. You can see and so on, I did that. So I just put them in where they're at. So with Excel, we can just do a formula. And the formula we can put in, first you start, well, this the first one will count as a run, right? And then uh, what I do, I go equals if this equals this. Well, then it's just going to be the one above. If it doesn't equal that, then it's going to be whatever is above plus one. So that will automatically, and then if you just double click and send it down, it will automatically count the runs. And we got the same answer that we did right here, 10 runs. Okay. So I just put B, I just put, again, to repeat, I just put, uh, these are below, these are above, and just in the order they're at, and then put that, let me put that equations in so you can see what they are. Okay, so that doesn't have a formula because you start with a one, and then and then you just repeat that formula down, and it counts. It finally counts the run. So, um, so now we can start doing this here. So I'm going to copy this down and start filling it in. Um, so for the medians run test, we know that it, they're observed there's equal to ten of them, right? And the number of them. Well, I could just go, I could just, I, I could, well, probably if you want to do it automatically, I could go uh, equals, um, basically, these aren't numbers, right? They're letters, so you can't, so they can't use a regular, regular count. What you got to do is you got to do, do the equation a little bit differently. Um, you have to go count if. And you're going to count count this range. And you're going to count if anything's in there. So that's a wild card, right? So there's 22 observations. So then what we can do, we can use uh, these formulas right here. And so for the expected return for a medians test is n divided by 2 plus 1. So I'm going to go, go in here, I'm going to go equals 2n 
divided by 2 uh, plus 1. So that's the expected returns. And the standard deviation is the square root of n minus 1 over 4, because this is the formula for the medians test. So I'm going to go equals the square root. And of course, you want to keep the whole numerator all together. So I'm going to do another parenthesis for the numerator. And it's going to be n minus 1. Close the, close the numerator and then divide by 4 in the denominator and close your square root. So then you have the standard deviation. So, um, and then finally you can calculate the z. And I have the formula for that. Let me copy it in here. And the z, the z score is uh, r minus, this looks very complicated, but you see this right here, n divided by 2 plus 1 is actually the median. Expected return, expected return of the median. So z equals r minus this. And this formula here is actually what we just typed in for the standard deviation. So it's r minus the expected re return divided by the standard deviation. So it's not as hard as it looks. It's equal to uh, r is the number observed. Right? And it's going to be minus the expected number. And of course, uh, remember, again, we want to make sure we put parentheses around the numerator. It's not going to come out right. Divided by the standard deviation. So my z-score is a negative 0.8727. We could probably format these a few less places, right? Maybe three places. I'm not sure what the book asks for. So finally, for our conclusion, well, um, let me paste a little picture in here. For our conclusion, um, if there's too few runs, well, that means all these are on one side, and that's not random, right? If there's too many runs, that means it's zigzagging, and zigzagging is random too. If it goes up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down in the pattern, that's also not random. So if it's acceptable, the z has to be between a minus 2 and a plus 2. In this case, um, it's acceptable. We could say uh, acceptable number of runs. So we could say that data is random if you do a medians run test, right? So from a medians run test, the result is that it's an acceptable number number of runs. So it does exhibit randomness. So now we can do the 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 up down test. The up down test, the way you would do it. Um, so you'd look at your runs and you'd circle. You can't do the first one because you have to go whether it's going up or down. So you start with the first one. Well, where does it go from the first one? It goes up, then it goes down, then it goes up and up, then it goes down, then it goes up. So you go through and label them up and down, and then you count the runs here. So there's one, two. These two are right in a row, so that's a run, right? There's two ups in a row, so that just counts as one run. I actually, I, it's, sometimes it's easier to circle. Since it's going up and down so much, I circled the two times it was up. You know, it, it, there was actually a run. So um, out of the 20... We have 19 out of 22 observations. We have 19 runs. So how would you do that with uh, with the up-down task? Um, let me put it here. Okay. Uh, so I actually put hi I highlighted the two yellow ones just so you can see. Um, maybe move this out of the way. And um, so I do the same thing. I start with one. Basically, I copy this formula to save some work. I'll copy both of these. Let me hit escape. I'm going to copy both these formulas. And I put it in here. And it's doing the same thing. It's looking to see if these are different. And you can see that change from up to down. And if you double click again. And what happened? Should have been 19. I know I did. This is the first one. This one counts as one here. And then we can copy this formula up. And it's 19. Sorry, I, I started. I, I, I started. I, I started at the wrong spot. You got to start there. Okay. So, 
So now we're going to do the same thing. We have to calculate. We can, well, we can, so we can go here and go the observed is equal to 19. And, and in this case, n is equal to count if. And the range is going to be this many. And then again, use an uh, asterisk wall card. But we've got to add one because remember, remember we skipped, we didn't have the first one. So again, there is 22. And the expected return is, uh, let me move some of this out of the way here. The expected return is 2n minus 1 equals 2 times n minus 1. Now remember, we want to put the whole numerator in parentheses so it gets it in the right order of operations. And then uh, divide it by uh, 3. Okay. And... Uh, and then the the standard deviation is the square root of 16n minus 29 over 90. So it's equal to the square root, extra parentheses, 16 times n minus 29. Close the parentheses in the numerator, divided by 90. And then close the parentheses on the square root. And, then, and let me make sure it looks like it's got a mistake. Hold on. 16 times n, oh, minus 29, I put 26, and this is 90. Too dark in my room, I'm clicking on the wrong keys. Okay, that looks correct. Then we calculate the z, and you can still see this is r. This 2n minus 1 over 3 is the same thing as this, so it's r minus expected return, right, divided by the standard deviation. So the r's are observed minus the expected return. Divided by the standard deviation. And again, don't forget the parentheses in the numerator. It won't come out. And we get 2.43. And looking at this, there's too many runs. So there's too many runs. Not random. Okay. So, um, so that's all there is to it. That's actually, it's kind of a cool test. Not as hard as it looks. Um. So, what do they mean by too many runs? Well, it's not random because it's, it's there's there's there, it's not random because it's going up and down repeatedly, right? That's also people would think well too, too many on one side is not random. Well, also it's not random if there's a if there's a pattern of it going up and down, right? So with the up and down test, we find that it's not random. With the median test, it is. So even so, both tests come to different conclusions. All right. So if you like this picture, if you like this uh, video, my picture will come up. Click on my picture to subscribe. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. Yeah, give me any comments. I like to read my comments. All right. Thanks for watching.